Hello everyone, my name is Vlad Stanovsky, and today I will be walking you through a whiteboard presentation that introduces advanced analytics to a business audience. Before I begin, I would like to give full credit for this whiteboard to Venki Rao. I saw him tell this story a couple of months ago, and I wanted to record it for everybody's benefit. As decision makers today, we face increased pressure to make decisions that are based in fact, and not just based on experience, knee-jerk reaction, or gut feeling. The first challenge is finding the right information. So finding the right data, going to the right data source, and pulling it out. At the end of the proverbial day, this data typically ends up in an Excel spreadsheet. So here we have Excel spreadsheet or spreadsheets. Then as decision makers or as business analysts, we use Excel to manipulate the data and put it in, into a form or fashion that's actionable and usable so that we can make that decision. The proliferation of, of Excel spreadsheets over the last few years has increased the acceptance of business intelligence tools amongst business users. So I may take the spreadsheets and put them into a business intelligence tool and then use the self-service capabilities of a BI tool to visualize it and analyze the data. And BI tools are very good at visualizing and they provide self-service tools that are very intuitive and we can really bring this data to life. So as a hospital administrator, for example, I may be concerned about hospital readmissions. And I may try to analyze them by department, by diagnosis, and look at that over time and try to spawn some trends in the data. And what we have here is people interacting with the data. In the real world, data is never simple. There's something called a data triangle. And the first angle here is data sources. So there's two types of data sources that we work with. Uh, there are the traditional data sources. And these are the data sources such as databases, Excel spreadsheets, um, transactional systems, data warehouses, etc. But then we also have big data, which has seen a tremendous growth over the last several years with all the sensors that are out there uh, and all the data that's being gathered in, in various formats. So data sources such as uh, Hadoop, IBM Big Insights, NoSQL databases, etc. Data also exists in different forms. So we have data that's at rest. And this is data that's been captured. So a transaction has occurred, it's been stored in a transactional database. It may also be stored in a data warehouse. But there's also data that's in motion. An example is a shopper swiping their uh, credit card at a retail outlet. So we may want to capture that data while it's in motion and try to prevent things like fraud. There are also different data types. We have data that's structured, but also unstructured. Structured data is the typical data that you think of. We use business intelligence data in rows and columns and databases. Um, unstructured data can be data in any other form. It could be blogs, it could be documents, PDF documents, documents that are scanned. It could be textual information that's stored in a database, freeform notes that a doctor may enter for a patient or somebody that's maintaining machines might enter in the maintenance log. So when you look at these three corners of the triangle and then you think about the type of data that you analyze with the business intelligence tool, you're really analyzing a subset of a subset of a subset of data. And if you're not analyzing all of the data that's available to you, you can bet that your competitors are. And this is really where advanced analytics comes in. So advanced analytics can look at all of this data, can look at all of these three corners of the data triangle and analyze the data for you, uncover 
correlations, causations, and really anything that's interesting and useful in, making, in trying to make that decision. So what we have here is we have algorithms interacting with the data. As a human being, there's only so much that we can look at, so much that we can analyze. So again, going back to that hospital administrator that's looking at hospital readmissions, he may be looking at uh, readmissions over time, trying to slice it by demographics, trying to slice it by income levels, uh, by diagnosis, by department, etc. But there's only so many variables that he can analyze, and, and in his analysis, he's biased based on his experience. Typically, however, there are really thousands and thousands of variables that are being gathered on the patient. So think of all the data that's not being analyzed in a scenario such as that. And that is why we've seen a proliferation of advanced analytics technologies in the marketplace. There are two types of technologies out there. So we have tools that provide sophisticated analytics. And we have tools that emphasize ease of use, GUI interface, and things of that nature. So the tools that are on the right are less robust than the tools, are, than the tools that are on the left. So on the left hand side here, we have the capabilities such as the R programming language. And R is very powerful, but R requires a programmer. Uh, finding a programmers with the right skills is tough. Secondarily, when programmers uh, write code, they make two types of mistakes. They make syntax errors, which a compiler can uncover, but also make logical errors, which are very difficult to find. For instance, one of the hospitals that we worked with uh, that does a lot of kidney transplants, they analyzed statistically their data and one of the key uh, lines of code in there was they had to eliminate patients that were under 18 years of age for their analysis. Well, it turns out using the data audit capability of SPSS, in a matter of minutes, we found that they were not excluding those patients. So SPSS is really what bridges this capability between sophisticated analytics and ease of use. To further illustrate the value of advanced analytics, I will take you to the city-state of Singapore. It is an island in Southeast Asia. It is a highly sophisticated society. And if you've ever been to Singapore, uh, you know that it rains every day, and specifically between the time of 4.30 p.m. and 5.15 p.m., it rains really, really hard. Also in Singapore, if you want a taxi, you typically go to a pre-designated taxi stand. And during this peak, during this peak time of 4.30 to 5.15, there are more customers than usual waiting for a cab. However, during these 45 minutes, the city received many, many complaints by angry constituents that there were not enough taxis, that they were waiting for a long time in the rain, getting soaked. Or rather, that should be a, that should be a sad face, not an evil face. So they had angry customers calling the city line and complaining about the lack of taxis. So what the city did was very logical. They went to their business intelligence tool and they analyzed the data that they had. So they looked at the number of taxis and they also looked at the number of people that were waiting for taxis. And what they found was that there were not enough taxis to service the customers that were waiting during this, during this time. So the next logical step that the city took was to increase the number of taxis. So they increased the number of medallions. As a result, the number of drivers went up, which makes sense. The city 
had to spend money for this initiative. So this was a program that they had to invest to get uh, these additional drivers tr uh, trained and to get them out on the street. So it took time and money out of the city budget. The first consequence that the city noticed was that the income of the drivers dropped. So because there were more drivers on the road, their income dropped. And then there was the key metric, which was number of complaints. Rather than go down as expected, the number of complaints actually increased. So it, not even, it did not even stay the same, but it actually increased. So what the city gained with this data analysis here was not actual knowledge. It was the illusion of knowledge. At this point, the city did not know what to do, and they took this problem to the university in Singapore, and they found a data scientist, a professor, who took up the project. And he used advanced analytics. He not only looked at the obvious data points that the city had already looked at, but he looked at many, many other variables, including weather patterns, and GPS data. Every cab in Singapore has a GPS chip and the city tracks their location in real time and also stores that. So by analyzing all of these different data points, he found that whenever it rained, the cabs stopped. This was an interesting founding through further analysis and through conversations with drivers, he found out that the reason for this was when it rains, the number of accidents tremendously spiked, especially between 4.30 and 5.15 p.m. It's rush hour, it rains, and that's the uh, peak time for car accidents. He also found that whenever a car accident happened, the insurance company withheld $1,000 from the driver while they investigated the accident. And so what the city did is they renegotiated the policy, the insurance policy. So through a policy change, they affected the outcome of complaints. They changed the behavior of the drivers, which took minimal cost and minimal effort. And so now when it rains in Singapore, during the hours of 4.30 of and 5.15 at the taxi stands, there are cabs and people don't have to wait very long. So what the city went here is from the illusion of knowledge to actual knowledge. And here I will quote Stephen Hawking, who has said that the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance, it is the illusion of knowledge. Before I conclude this video, I want to make a few comments. I forgot to mention why the complaints increase with the increased number of drivers. As I stated, with the increased number of drivers, their income went down. And this made them even less inclined to drive in the rain because their risk-reward ratio became even less favorable. This Singapore taxi story is real. However, I don't know whether any SPSS products were actually used. If you Google Singapore taxi, you will find plenty of comments that say that Singaporean taxi drivers are the worst in the world, especially when it rains. This taxi story is universal and easy to understand, but you may want to use a story that is more applicable to your client. There are many great SPSS ROI case studies that you can use here. Telling a story to an audience allows you to build a report that is more emotional than simply presenting facts and figures. For other easy to relate to stories, I would highly recommend this book, How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg. It was published earlier this year 
and it tells compelling stories that everybody can relate to. In every story, math is used to get to the truth behind common and even scientific misconceptions. From World War II battles, to mutual funds performance, to measuring school performance, smoking and lung cancer, target stores analyzing sharper behavior, finding out whether good cholesterol pre prevents heart attacks, etc. I may record some of these stories if enough people ask me to. And with that, thank you for watching this video.